Hi everyone, Dr. Mark here. Now, when a cell gets damaged, it'll try and repair itself. If the damage is too extensive, it'll undergo a particular pathway that will ultimately lead to cell death. Now, this pathway can be the necrotic pathway or it can be the apoptotic pathway. And there are some similarities, but also some significant differences. Now, let's have a look. Firstly, if we begin with a normal cell, and let's say the cell is now damaged, this damage could be oxidative damage, it could be direct injury, it could be chemical damage, it could be multiple different types of damage. And what happens is once it's damaged beyond the repair process, so for example, necrotic cells, actually if they're damaged not too significantly, it can start to repair itself. Apoptotic cells cannot. Now, as we go from a normal cell, which contains the nucleus with DNA, it contains the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, you've got the mitochondria as well, you also got some intracellular compartments as well. If it's damaged, it will start to move through a particular pathway. For apoptosis, the ap apoptotic pathway is actually programmed. It's a programmed cell death, which means cells, after a certain amount of time or due to certain types of damage, are actually programmed to go down this specific process that results in cell death. That means it's energy dependent, okay? And once it's begun, you can't really stop it. So that's apoptosis. For necrosis, it's not energy dependent. It doesn't usually happen to a single cell like it happens here for apoptosis, but can happen to a group of cells together. And as they both move through, some similarities are, they both begin to bleb. That means the membranes start to expand out a little bit as you can see here but some differences are for the necrotic pathway the organelles being the mitochondria for example and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum they begin to swell up for the apoptotic pathway the organelles actually begin to shrink and the dna within the nucleus becomes fragmented and condenses as well this doesn't happen for the necrotic pathway. Now as we continue down, what happens is as the organelles, for example, the mitochondria begin to swell in the necrotic pathway, the mitochondria stop working properly so they don't produce ATP. It means they also start producing what we call reactive oxygen species. So these are oxygen molecules that are like tearing electrons off things. And that means it damages pretty much everything and the membrane becomes broken and leaks. So it starts to leak all its components out of the cell. When it comes to the apoptotic pathway, while everything begins to shrink, ATP is still being used from the mitochondria and the membrane remains intact. And what happens is that the membrane starts to bleb off and it actually starts producing these smaller bodies called apoptotic bodies. And they start to get internalized by phagocytic cells. Phagocyte means eating cell, like macrophages. They start to gobble it up and then they break it down. Here, with the necrotic pathway, when all these substances leak out from the cell, it releases chemicals that stimulate the inflammatory process, which means necrosis doesn't require energy, happens to multiple tissues, leaks all its substances out of the cell, and promotes inflammation. Apoptosis is a programmed cell death, goes down one particular pathway, can happen to a single cell, or it can happen to multiple cells. The membrane remains intact, the DNA becomes condensed and fragmented, still uses ATP, the membrane blebs off and produces apoptotic bodies that then becomes phagocytosed and broken down, no inflammation occurs. So these are the major differences between apoptosis and necrosis.